What's up, students? Today, let's talk some midterm review. Um, I have this box here, and I love this question because there isn't some numbers, and you guys know how I feel about just being able to manipulate variables to find what we want to find. So we look at, we want to know all the forces on M1. In terms of M1 and M2, what's the minimum value for mu static to prevent the box from moving? The acceleration of M1, which is really the acceleration of the system, and also the tension on the string. So first, if we look at all the forces acting on M1, we are going to have always a weight on everything. So this has a weight Fg. The table is going to push back on that weight with force Fn. There is going to be this tension that is going to be pulled from the string, force of tension, and the force of friction, which is keeping this box either from moving or fighting motion on this box. Okay, so those are the forces that are acting on M1. Question two wants to know, in terms of M2 and M1, what is the minimum value for mu static that will prevent the box from moving? So essentially, when these boxes start to move, right, if I call the direction of motion in this fashion here, for this system to accelerate and move, M2 has to win over Fg. And if we look, M2 has a force of weight on it as well, Fg of M2, and it has this tension, and these two tension forces would cancel each other out. So once Fg2 becomes bigger than F, uh, the force of friction, sorry, this is not, this is the force of friction, once it becomes bigger than the force of friction, it will start to move. So for static to keep the boxes in place, we know that the force of friction equals mu Fn, Okay, so we know that we want the force of friction here, which we know is going to be equal to Fg2. As long as it's equal to Fg2, the boxes will not move. And Fn is going to be equal to Fg1. So if I simplify this and say, as long as Fg2 equals, which is just M2g, as long as that is equal to Fg, then this system will not move. So as long as I have these, these will cancel out, and our answer will just be mu m2 over m1. Because if the fg on m2 is any bigger than the force of friction, this system will accelerate. C wants to know the acceleration of m, which is really just the acceleration of this total system. The acceleration of a system is defined by f net, divided by the total mass of the system. So if I look at F net that's acting on the system, we have Fg2, right? Now, once I said, there is a force of tension here, but these forces of tension are equal and opposite, so they're gonna cancel each other out, minus the force of friction, and I made this minus because it is gonna be opposite to the direction of motion, divided by M1 plus M2. That is the total mass of the system. So we can simplify this and, and make it a little bit more. So we have um, Fg, which is M2g minus mu Fn, which is really going to be M1g divided by M1 plus M2. You could factor the g's out if you want, but this is good enough. This is going to be the acceleration of block number one. Now, guys, to find the tension on the string, all right, and in this equation, when we're going to be deriving it, it's not going to have numbers. It's very math intensive. But we know that if we want to find the tension of the string after we know A, we would simplify one of these two systems, and then we'd use the same formula again on this small system. So I'm going to choose M2 as my smaller system, and I'm going to say that A equals F net over M, okay? Now, we know that A I just solved for was M2G minus mu M1G over M1 plus M2. This was my A. But now the F net that acts on this box is going to be Fg, and that's positive because it's in the motion of the direction of motion, minus the force of tension, which is opposite the direction of motion, 
divided by m total of our new smaller system, which is just m2. Because essentially, if you had numbers, you can stop here. This would be the acceleration of th this system to be used to find the force of tension on the smaller system. But here, in this, they want you to simplify it down a little bit, and it, it becomes a little hairy, but I think we could do it. If I isolate FT, because that's what I want to solve for, I would see M2G minus M2, and this is going to be M2G minus mu M1G, and this is my A, guys. So I'm just plugging in for A, M1 plus M2. All right, then I could keep simplifying this down even more and say that M2G minus M2 squared G plus, I'm just distributing in that M2, guys, M2, M1, UG, all over M1 plus M2. I can keep simplifying this down because I know I'm going to want to cancel stuff out. And if you're a strong math student, you could probably do this quicker than me. But I need to find a common denominator. So I'm going to do M1 plus M2. That is going to be times M2 over G minus the same thing because I did not have to change anything to make this common denominator. Now this whole expression is over M1 plus M2. I'm gonna bring this up here now to keep going. If I do some more distributions, guys, I find M1, M2, G plus M2 squared G minus M2 squared G, that's sweet, plus M2, M1, U, G, all over M1 plus M2. I'm going to cancel these guys out now. That makes things wonderful. See, M1, M2, G, plus mu, M1, M2, G, divided by M1 plus M2. I could factor out an M1, M2, G, then that leaves me with 1 plus mu over M1 plus M2. And I don't know of any other way to simplify that any further, but this expression right here would be used for the, uh, for the tension on the rope. So you can kind of go through in this math, but like I said, the main thing, guys, for these problems, for pulley problems, is step one. Always find the acceleration of the entire system, M1, M2. And because they're attached by a rope, everything is going to accelerate the same rate. So then I could take that acceleration and plug that into here. Guys, the acceleration of the system is not 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a common misconception. It wants to do that, but this box holds it back. Okay, so once I found this A of the whole system, I knew that the A of M2 was the same. The F net on A was just, uh, the F net on M2 was just these, and I divided it by M2. So this was A, this was F net right here, and this was the M of that system, which is just Newton's second law, and that's how I solved for that.